So, uh, yeah, we're going to start. I think uh, I'm first, I'm really happy that you all here. We got all, uh, all the world here, maybe <laughs> yeah, the coaches from all over the globe. Uh, I'm really happy to see you guys. And um, OK, without any further delay, I will let uh, Milan start on his topic. He's going to talk today about uh, the positionless basketball and 3x3 and building an offense uh, on this concept. So, so uh, I still will, would like to ask Milan to do a quick introduction. Uh, at least I'm pretty sure everybody knows who he is and what are the teams he's coaching. But anyway, since this session will be recorded uh, for, the la for later, uh, just quick introduction and then uh, we can go. Okay, Milan, we are all attention. Okay, thanks. So, thank you for the introduction and uh, thank you for making all this possible, first of all. Because if you didn't start it, I don't think anyone would start it uh, anytime. So, thanks about that. Uh, my name is Milan Isako. I'm coaching uh, Team Liman for three years now and uh, China national teams. I'm responsible for first teams, senior uh, men and women teams. They have their own coaches, uh, but I have my own translator and they're doing our philosophy, let's call it like that. And I'm making periodization of their trainings and I'm making all what they're supposed to do. And also I'm responsible for their youth national teams. Uh, so that, that's what I was doing for the past year. And uh, that this year and two years before that, I'm coaching and still I'm uh, Team Lima. Uh, first of all, uh, like Mitri said, if anyone at any point have any kind of question, please write it in the chat. You have a, in the lower part of your screen, you have an icon with chat. You can type whatever you want. I'm looking at it all the time. So I will see whatever you, are trying to ask uh, about the topic. So uh, this game looks really simple when you look at it, you know, from uh, beside the court. But any part of this game can be talked about for <laughs> days. So these topics specifically, I will try to make it as simple as I can and to talk about how I see these things and how I am doing things. So this is not necessarily how it's supposed to be done. If anyone uh, disagrees with something or agrees or wants to know something more about it, please ask a question. I want this to be more, inter more of an interaction than me trying to act smart because I'm not smart, you know, I'm just an average guy who does this job like we all do. So whatever you want to know more about or my opinion more precise about it, please don't hesitate to ask a question because it will make it better for everyone if it's interaction. We all think better if we are interacting with someone, especially with a bunch of smart guys who think about the game on a daily basis. Um, okay, so uh, first of all, uh, I had luck uh, that... Lehman players called me uh, in the season 2018-19. Uh, they thought that I could help them. I used to play 3x3 before my injury and uh, uh, the kids that I used to coach 5-on-5 five five basketball, they were playing 3x3 in Serbian local tournaments. And in Serbian local tournaments in that season, they're my kids that I used to coach were the only team that beat Team Liman that year. And Team Liman players were kind of, you know, surprised and they asked me if I wanted to help them. And this, this is how it started. I had a very big luck that uh, Liman players uh, gave me total freedom and uh, completely believed in what I wanted to do. Be to what I saw and what I thought we could improve. Because if any coach, as you probably know, if any coach doesn't have that, 
it's impossible to 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 do anything to make progress you will get even worse if any of the players uh doesn't actually believe in what you're preaching or seeing or proposing so i had i had a very big very huge luck that all liman players were completely open for my philosophy and how i see that game at that moment i will talk about how it changed how i see the game because after every season the game developed the teams were getting better we had to change our game so i will talk a little about that also but most important thing i think if you don't have uh uh belief uh so it's important to build the confidence of the players in what you preach that's the most important thing i didn't have to do it when i started working so i had luck that i could implement what i saw and what i thought about the game uh the philosophy that I, i will speak mostly about liman now and because those players you know when i say a name of the player you will know who it is because if i tell you the name of chinese players i guess you will probably not know although the story about china female team is really interesting also maybe we'll do it some other time um i will talk mostly about team liman so my philosophy in coaching in terms of building offense but also defense or anything in the game is to try to make things as simple as possible for the players and as defined as possible all situations that happen on the court we should have defined as simple as possible and then in practices to try to repeat those situations as much as possible to make it uh automatic and to build confidence in the players to recognize those situations uh in my opinion most important thing in any sport is confidence self confidence of the players and confidence in the teammates and the team uh also in my opinion and experience the best way to build it is to make things simple so they are understandable and to keep repeating situations that happen often on the court in the practice or in the scrimmages and that way you're building automatization and confidence with the players so this is my philosophy in all the teams that i coach and i think it works i mean not works like they are extremely good although they are it's because of quality of the players but the players and the teams are getting better and we can see the progress from day to day from month to month not in terms of results result result is something that depends on a lot of things but in terms of objective looking of how the team or the player plays so that's the philosophy uh most important thing that i would like to to emphasize when i talked with some coaches in the world tour i saw that they're not or their teams or when i talk to the players they're not paying enough attention to that in my opinion most important thing in uh, any team sports is uh, importance of principles so for every situation that could happen of course there are all different situations but if we make it simple we can define some situations i will name them in our philosophy so uh i think it is very important to define all those situations and what is supposed to happen in every one of those situation why if you want consistency and for example my team uh luckily in the last two seasons played by far the most games in the world tour and i did some stats and analysis sometimes maybe i can talk about it it's not important now but if you want consistency in solving situations that happen often pick and roll with started dribble pick and roll without started dribble or a lot of situations you need to train the principles what exactly are we doing if this happens and to define most uh, situations that happen the most why is it important in high level professional sports 
I used to work in the highest level of tennis as strength and conditioning coach long before. And I saw it, I had luck to work with one of the best players, tennis players ever. Uh, I saw how uh, killing for uh, ego, uh, by getting principles, by having principles in team sports, you have the power in any situation to say this was your fault, not his fault, because we had a principle that you were supposed to do this. And that is the fastest way, in my opinion, to make progress in your team to be better. Because if you don't have a principle and just doesn't matter if you have full confidence from the player in yourself and you're watching the practice and something happens and you say it's your fault. In any high level sport, all good quality players, they love themselves more than anything. They will say, no, it wasn't my fault. Subconsciously or consciously, it doesn't matter. They will say, no, no, it wasn't my fault. It's, it was this or this or it was his fault. When you have the principles, you have the power to say, in this situation, you were supposed to do that. And if you didn't do it, it was your fault. And everyone immediately accepts it was their fault because before the season, in the off season and in the preseason, you practice those principles and everyone knows what they're supposed to do. So I'm telling you this from my experience with Team Lehman. When we started at the beginning of our cooperation, when we started incorporating principles, especially defensive but also offensive, I could control the players' emotions in the practice and not let them disturb themselves because everyone accepted it was their fault in specific situations and were willing to make progress, to work, to fix those things. So I, I spent a lot of time to speak about this because I think this is the most important thing in coaching any team sports and in 3x3 especially, at the high level especially, where every player thinks he's very good, he's the best or whatever. I mean, they are, but... And if you want to have power to do that, you need to have principles to make them believe in those principles. And that's your power how to improve your team better and yourself also. Uh, so, uh, what I learned from some other sports is the less players you have in a team, in a team sport, more important are the fundamentals. So, why is it like that? If you have more players in a team, I'm speaking about team sports where there is one ball and most of them there is just one ball, right? There are a lot of people who can fix your mistake in defense or offense after you make it. In a team sport that there are, there are less players, so there is three players in the, in the game in the 3x3, there is very few people in this big space that can fix your own mistake. That's why, in my opinion, in 3x3 basketball, fundamentals are very, very important. And uh, we focus every day in every practice on improving fundamental technique, footwork, and shooting. I, shooting is part of technique, right? But, and specific shooting for every player. That's for all the team that I coach. Uh, doesn't matter how good coach you are and you have some great plays or your team plays great team basketball, in the end, the player gets into a situation which he should recognize and solve. And percentage of him successfully solving those situations depends exactly just out of fundamentals. So every day, in my opinion, all players should work in developing first their strengths and then to hide their weaknesses, to improve them to a decent level. This is very important also, in, in my opinion. Um, uh, I have to say that when, when I got this subject to talk about uh, 
positionless basketball and and uh, uh, building the offense, I was thinking about how is it how it, it is impossible to talk just about offense in in three x three especially. It's a twelve second shot clock. Uh, you have you will lose a couple of seconds on, from before you get the ball below the basket to leave to check the ball out and uh, building the offense and talking about offense is impossible to talk about without transition so i will just touch a little bit the theme of transition uh my practices and my teams uh we make most damage to all teams both in defense and in offense in transition game uh my two main principles are of course opposite in offense what i want in offense i want in defense to prevent the other team to have so uh it's very simple uh if i'm playing transition defense and the team is supposed to make to check the ball out to 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 clear the ball uh our only goal is to prevent them to clear the ball with the pass with all the all whatever we need to do to make this possible we want to do that about those details we can talk <laughs> another time because i can talk one hour about transition defense for 3x3 but so that's the the main goal uh define those situations what happens if he gets the ball right below the basket what happens if he gets defensive rebound where he gets it how do the players off the ball play how the player on the ball plays you can you have a lot of details there so if i want that in defensive transition in offensive transition i want to get to clear the ball as soon as possible with the pass why because of 12 second shot clock if you're dribbling the ball outside there is no way you can get the ball in the position where you are in a triple threat and have 10 seconds on the shot clock that thing you can do only with the outlet pass so i don't want the other team to get in those situations and i want my team to get in as many as those situations possible this is what we practice the most we practice the most the transition game and uh, trying to stop those things and trying to uh, get into as many triple threats positions as uh, with as long as shot clock possible that we can so we have defined situation if this player gets the ball below the basket in this kind of position what do we do and we have three kind of situations possible and we keep repeating it in the practice to try to make it uh, automatic I think we, we succeeded a lot, especially last season where we were struggling, struggling with injuries and, and everything. I was most proud in our transition game in, in the last season. So this is what I wanted just to mention about uh, transition. I think it is the most important part of this game because of 12 second shot clock and the, uh, being, uh, having to clear the ball. It's a very important thing to focus on, in my opinion, and youth guys can make everyone can make as a lot of damage to other teams just by focusing on preventing them to have longer shot clock uh, offense and a good position to start the transition offense and by focusing that you get into as many as those situations that you can uh, so I think uh, it's very important to define those goals uh, one thing to, to mention also about transition offense but also defense is importance of timing uh, like in any sport timing is maybe probably the most important thing and the thing that makes uh, uh, slow players possible to play high level games or something like that uh, i'm emphasizing uh, that in the practices but also in the games we do things before they happen so what do i mean I mean, when I see that we are about to get the ball, not when we get the ball and the possession changes, but when we recognize that we are about to get the ball, that we do things that we're supposed to do. So before it happens, because every second in the shot clock, 
and every one inch of the position that you have to be more dangerous is so precious in this game. Because in two seconds you can play one more screen maybe, uh, or you can make a better attempt for the shot. And in the game where we have uh, from 50 to 80 possessions, it's very valuable. It's very, very valuable. Uh, so, in my opinion, timing is very important to practice the timing when something happens. It should happen before it actually happens. So it's very important because one or two seconds that you get in every situation in the game of 10 minutes, and 10 minutes is 600 seconds, you can have a lot of possible uh, advantage in the scoreboard in the end. I think it's very important. Um, about our offense, for all teams, but like I said, I will speak mostly about Team Liman. Uh, the first thing that I started incorporating with the team is uh, we had a meeting and I said, okay, so this game, outside shot is worth two points, inside shot is worth one point. It's 100% more. The ball is smaller than five on five game. In five on five game, outside shot is 50% more than inside shot. So we will shoot as many three pointers, I mean, two pointers as we can. And only as a consequence of teams defending our primary goal, we will attempt to make a layup or the inside shot. With the exception of Vasic, who is very good transition. Uh, defense to offense transition player fighting for the position and inside player. This is our second primary option to see if we get the ball outside to get him the ball inside in the behind the player position. But so most important thing that we started doing and our every offense every thought of every player is if we can have a solid two point shot, we will take it. Doesn't matter if it's first second of the sh of the of the offense or it is it's the last second of the offense. Also, in, when I'm mentioning it, in the last seconds of any offense, we will attempt a two point shot probably. Like 99% of the time, we will attempt a two point shot because it gives a better option for rebound for the offensive player because a probable bounce is is longer. For a tough two-point shot, bounce is most often not right below the, the rim. But that's something else. So, the first thing about offense philosophy is that two-point shot is worth 100% more than one-point shot. So, one-point shots are only consequence of good defense of our two-point shooting. Uh, we had to change that a little bit when uh, Stefan Stojacic got injured for the whole last season. We had to change a little bit when Ratkov uh, broke his arm also, but 90% of the time we were using that principle as a main principle. Uh, second principle, every player with the ball, every player when he gets the ball, has to be primarily focused on scoring. So we don't have continuation plays. We don't have, we play this for this to happen, never. First player who has who feels that he has the position to shoot or to, to score has to do it. I want to play as many possessions and I do not want to lose uh, strength and endurance to get maybe a little better shot for 10 seconds more of our shot clock if I can have a solid shot in the first second of offense. So every player with the ball is primarily dangerous to the to the basket of course when i started working with them uh ratkov and vasic outside shot was not so so good so every day we were working on their outside shooting and it improved a lot but they built confidence and they now if you leave them alone they will shoot which gives us a lot more opportunities to make they uh, to make uh, damage in defense because as short possessions we have in offense, the more defenses we will have in the game. And we are, I think we are very, very good physically. So we can play tough defense for 10 minutes. I, I, I like that kind of style. And this is 
the second principle of our game. Uh, second thing is the players without the ball uh, should punish any kind of sleeping in the defense. But in what way? In five-on-five -five basketball, it is important in some way to be fast. There is a different kind of transition game. The court is long, 28 meters. It's kind of very important if you're transitioning both from defense to offense that you're fast because you can score a lot of easy points. In game of 3x3, in my opinion, off the ball game, so without the ball game, it's not about your speed. You can use it, but with a lot of contact and pulling, uh, the, there is really not a big advantage if you're fast. As we can see, not a lot of fast players are dominating the sport. Not without the ball or, or with, with the ball. In my opinion, game without the ball, doesn't matter if you're playing face-to-face -face or using body contact or with your back, is mostly just one step and fighting for the position. So with, in, in all the moments of our offense, our off-the-ball players, of course, if they're not very tired, will try to uh, grab you, outrun you just one step and to take the front position in front of you, which in five-on-five -five basketball would be considered a backdoor cut. We are not making exactly a backdoor cut. We're just trying to outcut the defensive player and to throw the ball in the empty space. Uh, in the first season that we started using just backdoor cuts, a lot of uh, pulling from the defensive player when you do it was not called. And we didn't throw the ball to the empty space. So I started emphasizing that we fight for the position and throw the ball to the empty space because referees call every time when the ball is going somewhere and the defensive player is pulling the offensive player, but the ball is going that way. They're, they are calling those calls. So we started implementing that in our first season and we kept doing that now. So we are not trying to outrun you. We're trying to just trick you a little bit to take the even just one step in front of you and then use our body to seal and to throw the ball in the empty space. That's about the off-ball game. Uh, so, uh, what we are trying to do in every offense, uh, it starts with a transition, but it doesn't matter if it's the first second or the 12th second of the offense. There, this is something that I call uh, accumulated advantage. Uh, what is it actually? So, uh, like I said, we don't have continuation plays. So we don't have, we have to do one screen and then go there and there and then for this to happen for the open shot. No, we're doing one thing at a time. So we're, if we, I will speak about three possible situations, but if we're doing the pick and roll screen on the ball, we have exact uh, position where we want it to happen, exact position of the third player involved and exactly what we want to do. So there are no, uh, continuation place. We know what we will do after, considering what defense does. But what is accumulated advantage? Uh, I like to focus on the details. I'm not, in any practice, I'm not saying, uh, telling the player, go make a screen. No. First, make advantage for yourself. So, considering how the defense is playing you, if he's even a little bit overplaying you, seal his back and take the inside position and we will throw the ball inside. I want to make every defensive player work their ass off every second of the game. How you will do that? The only way to do that is that every player of your three players in the court will punish their overplaying or their a little bit sleeping or not using hands or whatever. So every player, before he wants to do something or we intend to do something, has to make advantage for himself first. So if we have just a basic situation where a player goes to pick and roll from, from the paint to the outside player, and there's a third player in, for example, 45 degrees on the other side, doesn't matter. First, the player, the screener, has to make advantage for himself. The ball handler has to make advantage. The player involved will not just look. I will tell you how we move at that moment. So everyone is moving and trying to make first advantage for himself. And the situation doesn't end there. As soon as the screen happens, we want to make that screen 
as advantage, not just to stand there. We really want to make the screen to help our player have a little advantage. And immediately, that's a new situation where everyone have to make advantage from that for themselves. Doesn't matter if, if the cooperation happened. Uh, someday, if we can meet on the court or something, it's easier for me to explain in the court what, what smart enough guys, I think you know what I'm saying. Most of us coaches probably would like that to happen to our teams, but I'm a little crazy. So I stop the practice every time that doesn't happen. So I stop it every time. If they're lazy, I stop it. I don't care. So we made a deal that this is our goal to be better. I stop it every time. Do it this way. Do it this way. You didn't make advantage. You didn't make advantage. Did you make advantage? I'm boring. So maybe sometimes they will beat me in offense. Because in 12 seconds, so for example, if we are uh, in perfect scenario, uh, they, we got a defensive rebound or they scored on us and we make an outlet pass, in perfect scenario, we have nine seconds for shot clock. That's a perfect scenario. In most of the situations, we have seven, six seconds to find a good solution. If we make a first screen without first making advantage, we don't have time to do anything. We have to take the bad shot or the low percentage shot. It's very important to make accumulated advantage so that you can take as many shots as you can in as high percentage as you can. And this is only, a, believe me, it's only about the accumulated advantage. You cannot do it if the player, the screener doesn't make advantage for himself. If the defensive player is close, you will not make advantage from the first screen. There is no way. In high, highest level, when you're playing Novi Sad or Riga, even Zemun, they're playing pretty good defense and teams like that. It's very hard to make advantage in the first screen if you didn't uh, prepare the situation and make advantage for yourself, both players. Um, so this is like, <laughs> I know for every principle I'm saying it's most important, but that's how it is in my opinion. So about positionless uh, basketball. Uh, when someone looks at Team Lehman, uh, for example, I, I, I will give, Danilo is here, so I will give an example of Team Novi Sad. In Team Novi Sad, everyone can do everything. So they are very good technically, they, in fundamentals of the game, everyone can pass, everyone can dribble, everyone can shoot. So uh, that's a really good thing. But also in Team Novi Sad, not everyone does everything, although they're very good at it. It's very important to define who does what best and to try to make as many situations as you can for every player to do only the things they do good. As good the players get, they will want to be used more. So it's very important to talk to the players, uh, to talk about their role and the importance of the things that they do. For example, in my opinion, in my team, uh, Alexander Ratkov is the guy who is, in my opinion, he's the best player in the world. Probably a lot of people will not agree, but this is my opinion. And in, in my team, he's like the, he does everything and he gives the energy to the other players and, you know, but he doesn't take a lot of shots. So, you have to talk with the player that his role and the things that he does, although maybe he doesn't take a lot of shots, are maybe not as important as the things that the player with the ball or the shooter does. In my opinion, it's even more important because, for example, Stefan Kojic is a great player. He's a great player, reading the game, um, great shooting off the dribble, long hands, a lot of things. But... Without Alexander Ratkov, Stefan Kojic is 50% of Stefan Kojic. So, although Stefan Kojic can do some things or Alexander Ratkov can do a lot of things, everyone should do just or as just things that they're best at. So, in my team, Liman, I tried to use just the things that they're best at. So... Vasic, we are not using often in making screens. Doesn't matter off the ball or on the ball. I'm using him for the inside transition game 
for the outside shooting on the weak side if someone helps even a little bit, and for the handoff game. Why? Because in the handoff game, it's most likely switch and he will abuse the player who is switching on him inside. Ratkov is almost never playing with the ball, starting the dribble. His role is to do the things without the ball, to move, to cut, to make damage one-on-one without the ball and to help other players make better decisions and have more space to play. And he does only that. Of course, we're working on his shot every day and if he is left alone, he will shoot and every player. So, in my opinion, positionless basketball, the art of positionless basketball is that all the players should be good in everything for the critical situations. But you should use the players in their strengths mostly and make the system that uses their strengths. But if it gets flowing, it will look like everyone is doing everything. 